How's it going, Katanning? Can you hear the cicadas? Listen. Sounds like a thousand police cars with their sirens on at all times. It's pretty wild. Anyways, it's been a while since we did a daily video, so uh, she's gonna come along with me. Let's go on an adventure today. I'm out getting some inventory of the houses that we did for Summer Serve, just the different yards that we cut. Uh, the city was interested because they're, they're handing out fines and I think we might have stepped on their toes. So we're going to try to share some more information, do a better job of communicating so we can, uh, so we can work together. Someone told me the library was looking for uh, egg cartons. I just happen to have a couple. Three bags and the big one. Oh, they're not even open yet. I was hoping to find out what they're planning to do with all this. Oh well, maybe later. Grab a quick meeting with the codes officer. Thank you everybody, it's been fun. Man, I just got an education. <laughs> I'm late for my next meeting. I still haven't been to the office yet, uh, but uh, I'll, have to just, I'll have to fill you in a little bit. I gotta go to the Y. Promise I'll get there eventually. Finally seems to be some movement over here. Looks like they're putting in sewer lines or something. Can't really tell, but uh, progress. A little bit of progress. It's probably my last meeting here, and I'm late for it. Of course, I hadn't taken so long at the city, but so much good information, you guys. Well, had a good meeting here. Unfortunately, our good friend Jack is uh, leaving the greatest city in the world and on to his next adventure. So, Jack, thank you for all your all your good work in the community while you were here. Uh, I was excited to do it. The little garden here at the wine, we're just taking a look. This might be taken over by uh, Summer Serve, so pretty excited about that at least. Gonna be sad to see Jack go, but he's, had, he's done a lot of good work here at the Y. Uh, turned around a lot of things, and um, financially they're in a better place. Community work, they seem to be in a much better place than they were before, and uh, just wish him the best. I was wrong earlier, though. It looks like we'll be one more meeting here next week, and so if Jack's up to it, maybe we'll do some parting words and parting thoughts about the city from someone who wasn't from here and now is, is leaving here onto their next project. Still more community stuff to do today, but I still have not been to the office. I still have not eaten. Uh, so I'm gonna go eat and work for an hour or two, and then we will move on to the next project. Hi Tina. Hello. Haven't had Tina in the vlog forever. Well, it was. It was gonna be a real productive day. I mean it still was, I guess. But I have a problem. So got a little issue with our uh, pumps in the basement. So I've been getting a lot of water in the building. It like floods whenever it rains, and so I thought I finally had it figured out. I had it so the system was finally tripping on again. I don't know, um, you know, but it seems like the system gets overloaded. Now, uh, yesterday, for whatever reason, this pump seemed to get stuck in an on position, and then I think it overheated and burned it up. I tried to put this pump on it with uh, Jim's help. That did not help, so um, now that this one's cooled off, Try to connect it one more time, see if it'll pump some of this water out. The 
it's not working. So pray for no rain. If you know anyone that knows about these kinds of things, <laughs> please have them call me. <laughs> I need help. A couple plumbers I talked to in the past didn't want to get into that kind of work. I always wanted to have a double backup there because I knew this day was going to come, but uh, I didn't know it was going to come today. So that messed up my plans for the day. I'm supposed to get ahead on summer reserve projects today, lining them up for at least another month in advance, but that did not happen. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to go out with Kevin and do that tomorrow, but uh, you know, setbacks happen. It's okay. We move forward. God knows the answer. Figure it out. Many ways, story of my life. There's two probably. Did get caught up on most of my work, so that's good, even though it was like a half day today. Be another half day tomorrow. I'm headed up north again, but uh, you know, just pray no rain. No rain. It's just rained and rained and rained and rained. And even on the property here, it's like every time it rains, there's nowhere for it to go. It just drains out everywhere. So I think I'm running into that same issue at the building. It kind of reminds me of talking to the codes officer this morning, though. Hi, Daddy. Hey. You're playing what? <laughs> Jeez, be nice. Okay, back to that in a minute. Finger, which one? That one? <laughs> okay, go ahead and eat. <laughs> what? You gotta share. Good, Abby? This is the big birthday girl tomorrow. How old are you going to be, Joey? Five. Five. Are you going to do an interview with me? Yes. Yes? Okay, so we need questions for the interview. So if you're out there and you want to have a question for the big five-year-old, please put it in the comments, and I will make sure it makes it into the video. Sound good, Joey? Yeah. Okay. Little House on the Prairie, Bible time. Hey, sit down and read that. Sit down. I want to see you read it. I bet Lily will read it. chickens put away so I can finally tell you what I learned about from the codes officer. <laughs> I was talking with Tony who's our new codes officer today and uh, he was explaining the process and uh, he's not just take, trying to take care of blight like we are. He has a lot of different things on his plate. He's responsible for enforcing the garbage ordinance. He's responsible for abandoned vehicles, uh, the blight issue, and now that it's summertime uh, he's also responsible for grass. Now, it's not just as simple as writing up a ticket and handing it out and then, and then that's the fine is over. Every single ticket, every violation represents a court case. And so he has to do all the preparation for the court case, uh, which means he has to file all the proper paperwork, have all the correct documentation. And if one thing is missing, uh, the court case can get thrown out. So it can be a long, drawn-out process that doesn't get you a whole lot of return in the short run. But he's doing vital work for our community. And so, uh, Tony, I say thank you. Me watching from an outside perspective, I think you're doing a wonderful job and I commend you and I just pray that you stay in the position for long enough to see this uh, blight problem cleaned up. What we've been doing is we're trying to support Tony in his efforts to clean up blight and then also share information back and forth. And so that's the whole point of the blight map. So hopefully we'll be working off the same information and as the houses and properties uh, begin to be transformed, we'll kind of mark them off the list together. So we won't be doing the same projects that he's working on and uh, we won't be stepping on each other's toes like we did with cutting grass this last Saturday. 
you see, we might have messed up a couple of his court cases, but I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go and testify that uh, they did not actually cut the grass. And a couple of these houses that we've been cutting for three, four, five years in a row now, I have documentation going all the way back showing that they have not cut their grass in five years. Five years. They deserve the fine. Now, there are many other facets to it, but I'm not going to get into all of that today. Uh, the main point that I want to make is when Tony is trying to do his job, there are roadblocks and there are pitfalls at every turn. My guess is that if your life is like my life, you kind of feel that way about everything that you're trying to do as well. It seems like every time that I get some forward momentum going, there's like some kind of roadblock, something that I come against, something that, you know, two steps forward and one step back. But that's just life. That's just how it goes. See, when I found out that pump quit working today, like my immediate reaction is like, I just want to sell this building. I just want to quit. I just want to sell everything and just spend time on my homestead and just like shut out the world. And I, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I just want to give up. But you see, that can never be our attitude if we're going to succeed in life. And if we're going to succeed at turning this city around, that can never be our attitude. We have to go into this with the knowledge that there are going to be pitfalls. There are going to be roadblocks. But we also need to have the knowledge that when we fall into the pit, there is no pit too deep that we can't climb out of. There is no roadblock too big that we can't plow through it. We can never allow any of those things to stop us. They might slow us down, but when you hit one of those things in your life or in our, in our mission in this city, we have to just slow down, step back, reevaluate, allow God to speak to us, and then walk forward with a different solution. We have to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. We can never quit. We can never give up. And we cannot take no for an answer. So whether it's an unresponsive slumlord or a court judgment that didn't go your way or just a stupid sump pump in your basement, don't allow anything to stop you. Let's move forward, Katanning. Tomorrow's another day. Let's get after it. I think it's bad news. I can hear it outside. Rain again. Might be a long day tomorrow.